Blossoming Jasmine, right? <laughs> Yes, Blossoming Jasmine. Blossoming Jasmine. All right, Blossoming Jasmine in the building. Hey, Lockout Man. Hey, love, what's going on? What's good? I'm feeling blessed for the best. No complaints. All right, no all right. The higher power working for you? Trucking has humbled me and brought me closer to God. I'm always praying in the truck. God. <laughs> Damn it, man. You said <laughs> trucking brought you closer to God. Why? Well, Let's touch on that for a second. Like, like how? I mean, how how trucking humbled you down to bring you close to God? I'm always praying when I'm in the truck. One, I'm very, very grateful for my job. I work at Amazon. And two, like, I'm going to be honest, driving the truck, really the trailer sometimes gives me anxiety a little bit. So I just, you know, I just pray a lot when I'm in the truck. I just say, thank you, God, for the opportunity. Thank you for my coworkers. Lead me, guide me. Amazon's super, super strict. There's cameras everywhere. You're always being. So it's just like any slip up or if you don't follow their critical points, you, you could be done so. So I guess that's the new age trucking where you're always constantly being monitored. And I just try to be on my T's and Q's when it comes to that. So I just always, I'm always praying in the truck, like, you know what, just give me the grace to be on point today. And I haven't had any slip ups or, you know, I didn't do anything too crazy. <laughs> I, I think whoever you believe in, higher power, Jesus, God, Allah, whoever you believe in, take take that time to talk to them, especially in the truck. Shout out to uh, Swamp Girl for letting me know of a truck driver that just recently passed a couple of days ago. And uh, and I'm I'm just thankful enough that I still got my health. I still able to drive. I'm able to see. I'm able to pay attention. So, yeah, when you get up in the morning or go to bed at night, just however you do it in your own thing, well, that, that's how I do it. Eh? Thank you for the day. Watch over me. Uh, watch over my family while I'm not there. So, I mean, I, I thank God for a lot of things. Like, like last year, there was some weird stuff that happened. And if if me or my uh, my daughter-in-law was was there, we probably wouldn't be here today if, if we was there because some weird stuff that happened. So, so yeah, uh, it, it, be humble. Uh, be humbled by God. I, I like that. So, Jasmine, man, you uh, you reached out. You 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 had a story, a couple of couple of topics, and a couple of stories to to tell me on uh, along your journey. You uh, you started following me, and I I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, and Obviously. and I really do. And uh, and yeah, you 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 reached out to me, and you was like, yeah, hey, I I got a, I got a couple of topics, a couple of stories for you. So let's uh, let's start off with uh, on your journey to getting your CDL. So this this your first time getting your CDL. You you went through the process last year, and you you actually got your CDLs and everything. We can fast forward all that stuff, but. You're you're working at Amazon, like the Amazon, or are you working for a subsidiary of Amazon? Take your hat off. Excuse me? They don't sell hot dogs here. They took the bleachers out two years ago. I work for Amazon, the company. They're doing kind of like, I guess, a mass hiring when it comes to truck drivers. I think they'll always have third-party drivers, but they're hiring you know, any of their yard jockeys will now have to go over the road. So what they're doing is this is not the program I initially went into, but I did their career choice. So I had to wait one year of working at Amazon. Now you just have to be there three months. But I had to wait a year and um, I applied for 160 Driving Academy. And that was kind of inspired by... Jason Black, he has a, a broadcast on YouTube called The Business. This is The Business. So I like listening to his show. 
And he constantly had these truck drivers you know, call into his show, talking about how much money they were making. And, you know, I went to Hampton University. I have a degree in finance. But I, I wasn't happy in corporate America. You know, I worked for the school district of Philadelphia before in the accounting department. I worked in finance. And I just didn't like all the office politics. So I just was like, you know what? I'm going to work at Amazon. And everybody that I know was like really, really disappointed in me. Like, what are you doing? You're a college educated woman. You need to be in corporate America. And I was like, ah, no, I'm good on that. So when I heard about, you know, trucking, I just kind of did my research and I found out that Amazon pays for it. So I signed up. And um, when I was in 160 Driving Academy, I met a lot of people in the, you know, department that I'm in now, which is called Time Tom Team, is a transportation operations manager. It's really like a yard jockey, but they make you go over the road, short haul exemption. So you're really just going warehouse to warehouse, no more than 150 air miles, which is like... 200 miles, no more than like four hours, I think, one way. So I work in Delaware, so I can go all the way down to Virginia or as high as, you know, Staten Island, but not much further than that. And then I met these people when I was in CDO school who were on the Tom team. And they're like, oh, you work at Amazon? Like, oh, we're being paid to come here. I'm like, what? Like, I have to come here on my off days, and I don't get paid nothing. I got to pay tolls, gas. They're like, no, they pay for all of that. They pay for your school. They pay for your travel. You just expense it out. They pay for the time that you're there. You just have to pass. And, you know, they back up trailers all day. So I kind of felt like they had an advantage. And um, there's one girl. It was it. It wasn't even like a whole bunch of men and a couple females. It was kind of like even. A lot of people say, oh, there's not that many ladies at trucking. Not really at Amazon. My manager's a female. Most of the people on my team are females. So you don't really feel like, oh, there's all these men and there's no females. It's not like that. Amazon. So you, you actually worked through Amazon Warehouse to be select to be selected for the Amazon CDL school or for Amazon to pay for your CDL at school. Right now, if you work there three months, you can apply for their tuition. It's called Career Choice, and they'll pay for your CDL. And there's no obligation to stay at Amazon. So some people just go get their CDL and leave. There's no stop to work us for years. There's none of that. Okay, so Amazon is not. It is not putting a, a stipulation on you like some of these other uh, bigger uh, companies that be like, okay, well, we're going to pay for your CDL, but you got to give us uh, give us about a year or a year and a half to work off that tuition. Not at all. If you go through their career choice, you can choose to do a manual license or automatic if you go through their time team where they sponsor you, it's like you work for them. They sponsor you to go. You have to get an automatic license. So you, it just depends on which way you want to go. Okay. But they will pay for CDO. Okay. Okay. So, guys, if you really want your CDLs for free and, and don't, mind, don't mind the hustle and bustle of Amazon, for three months? Now, you, you say you got to actually put in three months. Is it like is it like they got to be put, they got to put in three months and then put on a list or will they get accepted right away? How did that work? You have to be a full-time employee. And once you work there for three months, then you'll get just basically an email that you qualify for career choice. And then whenever the program opens is when you can start. And the program, it just depends. Like, I applied for it in November, but the school didn't start until January. So you just have to wait until the next class starts. So that's how it works. So now this is like, so this is 20, 24 January. So the people that that got their three months in by, say, like, 
November, then they will be qualified to jump into the to the schooling this month, right? Yeah, I mean, say you started in November, yeah, November, December, January, you you qualify in January. You can start in January. It just depends on the availability of the school, and that's just one sixty driving academy. There's another driving school. Well, you probably can go through them. I, I think it's called Acora. I don't know the name. But there's other driving schools that you can go to. And if they start before 160, then just choose that program. Okay, okay. And, and all this is sponsored by Amazon. Yeah, so they pay for you. The way it worked for me is um, it was like a how many? It took me six months to get mine. But I think it's supposed to be like eight weeks. You know, the first couple of weeks, you have to do your drug screening, you have to get your permit, and then you go, my schedule was I worked four days a week, I go, you know, I worked Sunday through Wednesday, I went to CDL school Thursday, Friday. So you just go on your off days, but it has to be weekdays. If you go through their team, then once they sign you up for the program, they'll sign you up. And you just go for three weeks or a month, and they pay you to go, and then you get your CDL. But you only get two times to pass. The third time, you have to pay. Okay. So you so Amazon, the warehouse, will work around your time in school, right? Um, You just have to do it on your off days. Right. So that's what I mean. That, that's what I mean. They'll work around your, yeah, your time in school. Time. So if you're off... If you're off on the weekend, then you'll go to school on the weekend. But if you're off, like, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, stuff like that, you'll just go to the school on your off days. Yeah, I don't think the, the 160 was open during the weekend, so. Oh, okay. So you had to pretty much go on the week, uh, on the weekdays of your off days. So did you, you said it. You you have to set that up with your coordinator at work, though, right? Yeah, and every step of the way, they gave me accommodations. I've seen YouTube videos of people saying, I couldn't get an accommodation, but I literally never had that. They gave me accommodation after accommodation. I go over there crying, like, please help me. And they would always help me. It might just be my building, but I always felt supported, and they definitely helped me every step of the way. All right. So you 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 decided to work for Amazon slowly for to get your CDL and if so how how did you find out like like I'm I'm what was it advertised somewhere because I I don't see uh, I mean I talked to a few people that that work directly with Amazon but they are already drivers for uh for an aff Amazon affiliate but not Amazon, the company. So how did you come to find out what, what you do? You, you said, okay, well, I'm going to get my CDL, but I'm going to go through Amazon. But how did you find out that, that mm -hmm. number one, Amazon was hiring, and number two, uh, that they was doing that type of program for their employees? I, was gotten, I got into working with Amazon because I didn't want to work in corporate America. And... It wasn't until I was, you know, watching the broadcast where I heard these men talking about how much money they were making. And I was like, oh, okay, that's close to the salary of what I was making when I was in corporate America. It beat me being in this stupid warehouse. So I had, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I started working for, for Amazon. I just knew I wasn't going to get OnlyFans. I wasn't about to be selling coochie pics. So I said, I find working, you know, even if it's at Amazon, let me humble myself and, you know, just get a job. Who cares? Just make your money honestly. And I just did research after listening to the podcast and I just saw these like YouTube videos about how Amazon pays for it. I had no idea personally. It's just around the time that I started looking into it was when I qualified for the tuition payment. And I was like, oh, Rainer, I'm signing up to get my show. Okay. So, so from, so from corporate, so from the corporate world, I mean, 
you 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 just said yourself that you was making the same amount of money that you was making in the corporate world. I mean, well, of corporate, I'm I'm sure you're home every well, I'm sure you're home every day now considering what you're doing, but but considering what the truck driving is, what it consists of and and what it's about, you're home every day. And if you have a family, or if you have a family or something like that, you're you're home every day with them in corporate. You get off, you 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 got your night or your evening, and then you just wash and repeat in the morning, and then you off on the weekend. You're a young person, and so you living up in New York as well. So you your your weekends and your parties and all like that. But why why did you give all that up to work at a warehouse? At Amazon for less money. Well, for for less money before you got into the program. Let's let's clarify that. I'm gonna let you sleep one day. Then you're gonna get the fuck up and you're gonna go get my forty five thousand dollars. Yeah, no problem. The point of view of like, do I want to be a boss chick or like see all these women who are boss chicks and a lot of them have put their career over their families. And I'm 33. I want a husband. I want children. And I just wanted a job where I didn't have to take it home with me. When I'm at home, I want to be focused on my family. I don't want to be thinking about what I'm doing at work. With trucking, when you leave, at least as a as a driver who doesn't own a truck, I don't have to worry about the truck when I go home. I can focus on my family. You know, I learned, I learned how to cook. I'm like, I need to get my wife skills up, you know? And I just said, you know what? I'm going to focus on gaining wife skills, people skills, becoming a contribution to my community. And everything that I do will be a contribution. So I feel like trucking, you know, without truckers, you know, people wouldn't have products. You know, I signed up to work with the, you know, the election polls, you know, anything that I do, I want it to be an asset. And I just didn't feel like me crunching all these numbers was really helping me. I was, I really wanted to work on myself and focus on, okay, how do I get this husband? How, how do I make myself the best candidate? And I didn't think I can focus on both being like this boss chick career woman. I I felt within myself i'd have to choose and if you only get one i choose family okay uh before we go on to the nets cheesecake factory we we good with that yeah my brother (laughs) i i I just want to make sure because (laughs) some some females feel some kind of way of being being taken to the cheesecake factory i'm just saying all right all right so you're you're at Amazon. You got your license, uh, and you're still at Amazon. Now you 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 working on uh, their Tom team. What is that consist of? Like what what is that? So you're basically a yard jockey, but you have to every month put in at least twelve hours of over the road driving. But the driving is not like you don't go far. You don't go that far. Which I really like and I work at night so you know being in a big truck kind of gives me anxiety it's a lot of responsibility and you know people in cars are very rude they don't let you in you got a trailer to think about so I like working at Amazon because I can control like a hostler a lot easier with a smaller truck than I can a semi truck so I just felt like this is less stress. This is less stress than driving a semi. And, you know, it's all about muscle memory and, it, and like watching the trailer. So I enjoy it because I've seen myself grow and improve and become a better driver. I'm just basically backing all night in the dark when it's fog, when there's rain, wherever. It's cold outside. It's snowing. So it is challenging. But I like this kind of challenge than working on a data report that's stressing me out and giving me panic attacks. Like, this is something I can kind of manage a little bit more. Now, Amazon, 
of course, ain't going nowhere. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't foresee Amazon going anywhere. I, I don't foresee any of their warehouses shutting down or anything like that. I, I foresee them growing. You know what I'm saying? So, being that you you directly work uh, with Amazon and you mentioned the fact that you you work nights and mm-hmm. you're you're doing a lot of backing, so. I, I kind of said before that yard jockey's backing abilities is a little bit more comprehensive because they that's all they do all day. They back, they blind side back, they sight side back. They back in his own point. So when you do get out here on the road and get into a into a semi truck, now depending on your now depending you're gonna have to adapt to the extra 10 feet of the semi but but do you agree with me that when you do get out here on the road you you're not going to have too much of an issue with your with your backing do you think i agree because that's pretty much all i do but backing in a semi is different because like you don't have the back window unless you're in a day cab and even if you do i feel like the semi kind of shakes a lot more like it kind of goes Left, right, left, right. It's like, whoa. And most of the trucks at Amazon are, like, brand fake and new. When I drove one, like, two weeks ago, it only had a 1,001 miles on it. It was a brand-new Kenworth, so the brakes were super, super tight. I was like, oh, my God. Every time I brake this thing, like, every time I brake, this truck is, like, rocking. That's the only thing I don't like about being in the semi is you got to learn the truck. And I really don't drive it enough to get it from stop rocking from back and forth. But um, I, I say my backing game is on point. <laughs> okay. Okay. Shout out to your backing game. All right. So let's circle back to Amazon itself because you said you did work in the warehouse for a, a year uh, before you got into the to the CDL school, and then you now a yard jockey. So you're outside of the warehouse, but when you worked inside the warehouse, how was the what was the culture of the warehouse? Because I'm 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 hearing a whole lot of stuff that's that's not culturally allowed. You guys only got like point y'all work on a point system. Y'all y'all can only go to the bathroom which is a half a mile up the block and and all sorts of stuff. So what was the culture like in the warehouse? I think it depends on the department you're in and what you're really into. I was so so and the building that I work in is I think it's the largest building on the East Coast. So everything is fully automated. Every single point of this building is like fully automated. So instead of people, the last building I worked in, people will come and bring you products. Everything is brought to you by machines, and you just have to fill in pods. That's what I initially did, which I had no problems with. It was when I started training for other departments where I kind of ran into issues, especially packing that's when you pack the boxes, and I never met the rate. By the time I got into the packing department, I trained for it. I didn't know that if you train for something, whenever they need you in that department, you have to go to that department. I ain't like that. And I was like, well, I need to speak to HR. And they're like, no, you have to do this. I'm like, what? It's not what I thought this was. So I almost got fired over working and packing. I'm like, I've never been written up. And now... I'm about to go to Tom team and I'm about to get fired because if, if the manager doesn't write you up, the computer will because they try to do. So that, I mean, that was the only department I did not like. All the other departments I've worked in, the can't. And so I was easy, breezy, beautiful color girl. I was chilling. Hold on. You, you mean AI could write you guys up or what? Productivity. What? AI can write you guys up. Like, AI could be like, hey, we got to write up for you in your email. And they could send you up to the to to the HR and they can't, HR can't override that? Like, hey, don't worry about it. We got you. What? No. Nope. AI? It stays on, and it, it stays on your record. If you get so many write-ups during a certain period, 
I think you get two or three. After the third one, you get like a final warning, then you're done, Joe. And I, within two months being in this stupid tax department, meanwhile, I had been there a year, never had an issue. I go to this one department for two months and I'm almost fired. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? I hate this department. But because my productivity levels were low, they force you to be in that department 30 more days. And I'm like, well, why can't I just do what I'm good at? Why do I have to go back to this stupid department that I'm not good at? I don't like this department. They're like, that's the policy. So luckily for me, you know, by the time, you know, by the second write-up, I was already starting time team, which I didn't even expect them to hire me so quickly because I had applied for the job in April. I didn't hear nothing back. But once I got my CDL in June, I applied for the job in July. I was doing my paperwork by August. I had an offer letter, and by September, I was starting. So it kind of happened pretty quickly, and I was glad it did because it, it saved my job. So, Jasmine, you this is like going into the second year, I'm assuming, with, with Amazon as a whole, right? I'm two years in, yep. Okay, okay. So now being a female... Uh, driving the 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 trucks for Amazon. How how is that uh, locally? Because you you mentioned that you only go so far down and so far up. What's your what, what's your local radius? Because again, like I said, your your phone pings you from New York, and it sounds like you have the New York accent. So that's where you from new york and if so what what is your 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 route or your radius as a local driver i am from new york i'm from south side jamaica queens but i live in philadelphia and i work in delaware okay born in philadelphia so when you work in delaware they send you to other you know they send you to other warehouses in delaware but i was speaking to one of my coworkers, and like his he they call it a run so his run was from Delaware to Maryland, from Maryland to somewhere else in Baltimore, from Baltimore to New Jersey, and wherever else they were, they were like sending him to all these different warehouses. So we work 10 hour shifts or 12 hour shifts throughout the day. You can be gone all day, state to state, moving around trailers. And basically, that's what you do all day from, from at night. Going from different warehouses in different states? Yeah, you can. I mean, the one thing I really, really liked about Amazon is they're, like, big on safety. So the one time I had a, like, after all of my training, I had a run. I was just overwhelmed. I was tired. So they don't, if you feel like you're unsafe, you are allowed to refuse to, like, I can't do this. What's it called? In trucking, where you just, like, I don't know if he's like refusing a load, but if you don't want to drive, you just tell them that. I told her, I'm overwhelmed. I'm tired. I don't think it's safe for me to drive a truck or a hostel. I'm going home. And I went home. So they give you a lot of flexibility. You know, if you feel like you're too tired to drive, they will, I think it's called force dispatch. They'll never force dispatch you. And you, if you push yourself, to do something that you're not safe to do, then you can get in trouble for that if it becomes a safety hazard. You know what I mean? So they'll never force you to do anything that you do not feel comfortable with, which I really like. Okay, okay. Well, for us out here, (laughs) of course, if we feel tired, fatigued, and feel unsafe, then, yeah, we, we could just call up the dispatcher and be like, Hey bro, uh, I, it, it depends on the company now. I mean, don't, 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 don't get me to, don't, don't get me to lying for other companies. I, I can only speak for my own. I mean, if I get tired or if I get fatigued or anything like that, and I feel like that I can't drive, then the company can't force you to drive. I E F M C I says rules. You see what I'm saying? I mean, if a company is all about safety and let's say a driver been up since three, maybe four o'clock, three, two in the morning 
and let's say you do you drive about eight or nine hours and you 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 can't get the rest of the hours out then no i i i feel that they can't force you to drive they probably feel some kind of way depending on the company but they they can't force you to to drive i mean if you're tired you're tired and if you're going to try and push it then you're putting yourself and the 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 motoring public at risk so so shout out to them for for that so yeah, shout out to them for that. All right, so so that's that's what you do pretty much. Uh, get it sounds like you get paid well. Do you guys get paid uh, every week, every two weeks? Uh, how's your settlements looking? Do you remember one thing? This you better hear. You want to talk all this old school bullshit about the rules? Well, here's a rule you might remember. I'm the motherfucking fucking one who calls the shots. Um, we get paid every week, which I like. And um, I like I like working at Amazon because you could buy into their stock, and that has been lovely for me. You know, they have a good retirement plan. They pay you weekly. The benefits are great. You know, I'm 33, so they have this whole fertility program. So I'm trying to get into that. I took a fertility test. <laughs> so I know I'm fertile, but they have this extra thing that they offer. You know, if you want in vitro, you could do that through Amazon. They have all these, like, you know, they're very liberal. They have all these special benefits that, you know, especially for a female, I don't know if other trucking companies really offer that. So that's why I really enjoy, you know, working there. So what are you, what, what are you saying? Am, Amazon to help you get pregnant? Uh, They don't hold it against you because I think about that sometimes. Like, what am I going to do? When I get pregnant, like, I don't know. Somebody said maybe they'll put you in a yard shack. I cannot imagine being pregnant, getting up and down a truck, whether it's a semi truck or a halfway truck, you know, doing like 30, 35 moves a day, pregnant wobbling. I have no idea. But I know they're super accommodating and they don't hold it against you. And then once you do get pregnant, you know, they have, you know, they'll, They'll let you have leave and all this other stuff. No, nah, so, I was I, I was just going by off of what you said. Like they help you to go and get a fertilization test. Like um, that's well, what I'm I, tripping on. I think they have a program. I need to speak to the lady. You can freeze your eggs or something like that. Oh, I hell spoke to, no. <laughs> through Amazon. I but I don't know too much about it. But I'm pretty sure they do something where it's like in vitro fertilization okay Am- amazon <laughs> oh okay amazon <laughs> that's for the like, what? okay okay amazon <laughs> you're two years in you're working with amazon you, you you're enjoying yourself and everything but you said you're you're from new york and, and we'll talk about new york in a second but you you south side jamaica queens before you moved to philadelphia what was the cost of living like up there, man? I can imagine. It was crazy. Well, I lived in a studio apartment. It was really nice. I lived in Babylon. I worked in Melville at Henry Shine. My, like, studio apartment was 1400 a month. This is for a studio. So. And for I the people that don't, I, I know what a studio apartment looks like. But for the people that don't, let them know what a at so a studio apartment is just one big room with every was was what the kitchen session off and the bathroom session off. Everything else is just one big room, right? Well, maybe I had a one bedroom then. But my coworker when I worked at Henry Shine, her husband is like best friend with Carl Weber, who's like this book writer, whatever. He's known by like black people who like to read his books. He has a TV show called The Family Business on BET. He owns all these houses, like all these houses in New York. And my coworker's husband was like his best friend. So I was telling her I want to move to an apartment because I was, you know, staying with family, just basically giving them rent. And she was like, why don't you just move into one of his houses? 
So the downstairs area was like a kitchen, living room. It had a foyer. But you go upstairs, it was a bathroom. And I had a big bedroom with kind of like an office area and like a walk-in closet. Okay. Okay. So maybe it was a one-bedroom, but I don't know. It, it's still considered... It's- it's still considered a, a studio. I mean, it, it was just that your your bedroom, which was which was like what open space. When you get up, you can actually look downstairs, like over a banister or something like that. Um, no, you had to like walk up the stairs, and you would see the bathroom. But the bathroom was just a shower; you didn't have a tub. And then, if you make a left, then it'd be the, like the bedroom area. But was there any doors or anything? Because I, I guess my vision, and from what I've seen of a studio, there's, like, no doors. Everything is, like, open air. I mean, there's a door when you walk in. There's a door to the bathroom and a door to the bedroom. But it was a house. It was a house that, like, converted into two apartments, basically. Oh, okay, so you you're wasn't you, you, you wasn't the only one that was staying in the, in the, in the, in the apartment, pretty much. Well, the house was split, so it was kind of like an eight. Oh, okay. But on one side of the house, it was like a three-bedroom, and on the other side, I had a one-bedroom. So why why the move to Philadelphia? I just didn't want to be in New York anymore. All my friends that I went to college with were in Philly. So, um, and the girl that eventually, like, moved next to me, she ended up, it was a mess. She ended up getting to this huge fight with the landlord and it just created this big thing and you know we became friends so I was just like you know what I'm out of here like I don't want to be in New York anymore so I started applying for a job and you know in Philly and I ended up like six months later getting a job in Philly well yeah but I had for a while but I worked at Henry Sean for like three years I got an apartment in Philly, but I worked in New York. So I had to constantly travel back, back and forth until I got a job. It took me six months once I moved to Philly to actually find a job in Philly. So I would do all this back and forth traveling to Philadelphia every week, pay all those tolls, drive to Long Island from home. So I'd be in New York during the week, staying with family, and then come home on the weekend. And I was like, I have to find a job in Philly because I live there now. So it was just all right. So <laughs> let's uh, let's circle back to your uh, time in in CDL school because you 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 got your CDLs, but there was a little rough patch along the way. You you mentioned that you had to take the exam twice. Like what happened? I took it three times. Oh, it was three in times. School while I was for me because so you I worked failed, nine. You you failed twice, got it on the third round. Yeah, the first time I quit during the test because the truck had broke down the day before and I already didn't feel comfortable with taking the test. I didn't feel like I was ready. And they put me in a different type of truck with a shorter trailer. So I was just a mess. And I said, I quit. So that's an automatic fail. You know, I quit, but they fail you. So I quit the first time. I had a party to go to. I said, I'm going to go home and drink some champagne. I don't have time for this. You know, I live in Philly, but the test was in York. So it was like a two-hour drive. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going home before traffic builds. I time for this. Champagne, here I come. Then the second time, <laughs> the second, I like passed everything except for the parallel park. And I guess I positioned the truck correctly, but I just kept turning the wrong way. So by the third time, I each time I attempted the backing, I had it 100%. And then I did great over the road. So I had my CDO. Congratulations. <laughs> and, you, and you didn't give up. You, 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 you didn't give up. Some people would have just said, fuck it. I spoke to my granddad. I actually bought this little truck from amazon it's called big daddy what is it called big daddy truck it's big a little daddy. truck it looks like god damn big amazon oh uh, y'all in vito like fertro selling trucks with big daddy on there what 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 is up with 
What is this Amazon at? Well, it, you know, Amazon sells like little trucks. So when I was taking my, you know, after I failed the first two times, the instructor was like, maybe you should take like a bike and practice like maneuvering on a bike. He's telling me how to stand on the bike. And he was just like, the way a truck moves when you back it is the same way a bike moves when you back it. But I don't have no bike and I won't buy no bike. So I bought a little mini truck. It's like 20 something. And it's like a little truck, a baby truck, like a head truck. And um, I spoke to my granddad. And he was like, well, you try that truck. Who's the boy? So I told that truck, big daddy, I'm the boy. And you're going to do what I say. And I just will practice with the little truck. And I bought these little cones. And it helped me see, like, oh, I'm over steering. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. It helped me, like, envision in my mind when I turn the truck a certain way, which way the trailer was going. And in CDL school, because Amazon has so many people going through the school, you really don't get, and I guess most schools are like that. You don't get that much time in the truck. So when you are in the truck, you have to make the most of it. And the most of the time I was in the truck, I was afraid of the truck. So that's why my granddad said, tell that truck who the boss. So I would just talk to the truck, just like my granddad said. And the third time when I told that truck who the boss, it worked. So here we are today. You buying that little truck, that that was a good idea. And that's some that that is some suggestions from a lot of CDL instructors. They they would kind of be like, Well, get yourself a little truck. If you go right, the trailer is going to go left. And if you go left, the trailer is going to go right. And and see, this everything is by visualizing. You you, right. see, you see yourself doing it. And I'm, I'm always a big proponent of see it, do it. See it, do it. If you see it, you can do it. Like when I, when I see people struggling with their back end to get into a dock, I would get out and I would help them. And I would be like, do you do you see the lines? No? Okay. Do you see what's in front? Yes. I just guide them. Just say, okay, just see what you're doing so you can see the line. When they see the line, then they could see they could see that they can get in to the dock. Now, you're not gonna have that, you're not gonna have that line. You, you guys, you right. you just not. You're not gonna have that line, man. Trust me, I I know because in the beginning it was it was cr it was crazy crucial for me. Like I had to I had to eyeball the end of the trailer. I had to eyeball the other trailer, and it was crazy. But if you have if you get into some distribution centers or some places that actually have lines on the ground. Definitely use that as a guide, but just know you're not going to have that all the time. So always practice. All, always practice, man. One one thing I will say before we go is, you know, getting into trucking, I saw a lot of females doing it because I looked up a lot of YouTube, and they make it look a lot more glamorous than it is. But it's super, like, physical. You know, I only weigh about 150. Opening those doors to the truck. You know, thank God Amazon gives you all the tools. They give you all this, the outfits you need. They give you a persuader bar. They give you safety straps. They give you, and you have to, like, take pictures of everything you do. But, like, if that door smacks you in your face, your, your teeth is going to be messed up. If you try to open up that door in a certain way that, is not good for your body you could like mess up your shoulder sometimes you may walk on the side of a you know a trailer trying to because we have to confirm the seals verification you may see a driver peeing i've seen a driver take a dump like i was waiting for him to finish dropping the trailer and i walked to check the seal and there's a big number two i'm like what is going on i just want to say even if you are inspired by this conversation no it's like very physically demanding my second week into like dry you know being on the yard even if you do things being a yard jockey is easier sometimes they tell you like you have to hit the tires i was kicking the tires 
and I broke a piece of bone in my foot, so now I have to go to the foot doctor. You gotta be like, how? I, I don't know. You better preserve your pretty when you're doing this, because there's a lot of things. If you don't do it right, that wind hitting a little bit hard, you might not be so pretty. So you better, you know, really consider this, and you might see trash like drivers cleaning out their trailers. Like, where did all this trash come from? Somebody cleaning out their trailer. So this is this show is not as glamorous as it may sound, and we're having fun having the conversation. But this, this, you know, it's not that cute. I feel it. Be out cold, you know, in the fog. I drive at night. That was like super scary. So just know you don't you don't have to back a truck, drive a truck. You know, be wary of curves. It's not as a cute of a job. You may be cute, girl. But the job is not cute. The job is not cute at all. Okay, so Jasmine, man, before before we do get up out of here, man, we we got to talk about uh we we got to talk about your indulgence, man. You uh you 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 partaked in a little bit of the uh marriage of Juana back in the day, and uh, and and you and and now now you're clean and everything. So before you went to get your CDL or even went to Amazon itself because you had to take a drug test to come into Amazon itself, right? So how long how long was it between you deciding to stop smoking to applying for Amazon and then applying for the CDL part? Because I'm I'm assuming if you still work at the at the warehouse for Amazon, I mean, you, you're not going to get called in for no random. So I'm 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 assuming people could still indulge while they still working through the through the warehouse. But when they get on the on the truck and start driving the truck, then I know that's much more federally regulated. But I, how long how long was it that you was partaking in it and? You decided to uh, stop because you said you've been clean for quite a while now. Well, remind me, Tony, never to get sick again, huh? Remind me, please, never to have a serious illness because when you and Silvio and Paulie and all you pricks, weakness gets rid of fucking treason. Yeah, you know, I mean, Mary Jane is my friend, but I don't, I don't mess with her no more. So I decided to start trucking in November. I got accepted into the program by, like, December. I stopped smoking Christmas, like basically the week of Christmas, you know, and the program didn't start until the end of January. So I gave myself 30 days, but you don't have to take your drug test until after you pass your permit. So by the time I had like, how many weeks is that? Six weeks of being clean. And I just haven't smoked since because they drug test you a lot. When I was in CDL school, you still run the risk of getting drug tested, which will get you kicked out of the program. And then I was applying for time team. So I knew at any point I could be drug tested just to get hired on. Then once I did get hired from time team, the first week, even before, like they send you for DOT, before you, you have to take your physical, which technically isn't a drug test. But I would still be wary of that. Then the week we started, they just send you for a drug test. And it's not like corporate America. In corporate America, they give you two to three days to take the test. When you're a truck driver, you have to go immediately. And if you don't go, that's a refusal. So since I've been on time team, they've sent me on two or three drug tests. And they do drug test you often. One was for Amazon. One was to get the job. One was for the deal, uh, I guess, FMCSA, DOT. But, like, even the other day, one of my coworkers, he was backing and he broke a doctor or something. He did something where he damaged their warehouse. And they me for a drug test. Even if you work nights, immediately in the morning time, since, you know, the labs are closed, they're sending you before you get off work to go get that drug test. So I take it very, very seriously. I don't indulge, I don't indulge at all. I leave it alone. And, you know, even drinking, 
Yeah, I think DOT is to be compliant is 0.04, but for Amazon, they have stricter rules. It's 0.02. You got to be super, super careful with everything that you do. So I would say tread lightly and absolutely don't smoke because you can ruin your career doing that. Okay. Now you I said. Save it up. Now, now for you the s- money. Now you said uh, uh, a full 30 days. Yeah, so you you felt confident enough that it was out of your well, of course it was out of your system because you passed. But thirty days? I mean, what did you did you did you do anything extra, or you just let it subside it out of your body? I mean, I was a I was a heavy weed smoker because you know I I don't know I just I just would like smoke every day. So the way I did it was I just smoked less and less and less every week because I decided in November I was going to do it. So from November to December, I just slowed down on my smoking. Then I just went to the dollar store and I like show people in my YouTube video. I just went to the dollar store and I got a dollar store test. And I I felt like they were accurate because when I was dirty, I was dirty. And when I wasn't dirty and I took the drug test, I passed, you know, I passed negative. So, you know, I haven't had any issues and i feel confident i won't because i refuse to smoke you can't make me okay appreciate it appreciate that appreciate that again jasmine thank you for coming on man i really do appreciate it uh i am definitely enjoying this conversation let's uh go back to uh south side jamaica queens in new york man this year with the with, with tiktok and everything Everybody has something to say about the ball drop, but let's let's be honest. That 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 type of stuff been going on for years. It's it's for you guys out there that actually live out there. For the people that actually live out there. Do the regulars go out and and and, and hang out at eight or five, six o'clock in the morning to wait till Wait until the ball dropped the that the next day. Do the regulars do that? I've never been. And the one time I was in New York, you know, they literally like start shutting down the subway. So transportation is slower. They have all these dogs and police going on. I don't want to be a part of it. So I've actually, even though I'm from New York, born and raised, I've never been to the ball drop. Right. So what is, what is your and and being that you was like you said born and raised and you never been I mean I understand with the with with social media now just like blasting it like it's brand new but that been going on for tourist people for for years right I'd say if you want to do it um, get a hotel room that's on Forty Second Street and just watch it from your room so that you don't have to be out in the cold. And you still get the same. I mean, it's going to force you a pretty penny. But I'd rather, you know, be safe and chilling in my hotel suite than be out in the cold with all these people. Like, you never really know what can happen in New York. And I'm real iffy about, like, super large crowds. So. I'm out with the home. I had to put her on Xanax just so she could sleep. She was in the hospital unit for an hour and a half with nervous bowel syndrome. And That's my take. And again, and this is just for everybody that that lives in heavy tourist areas, New York, Miami, Florida, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I talked to um, a couple of people that lives in Florida and the aesthetic of of for them is different from a person that actually come down there to tour. Everybody makes this big to do, but. For the locals down there, they like hey, we we see Disneyland every day. It, well, what's the big deal? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so you being from New York, you you guys see that every day, right? Yeah, I mean you 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 guys like you you guys don't don't even go to Times Square. Like like you Not guys already you guys already know for the locals, you guys already know that Times Square is super expensive and is really and it's really not a big deal to y'all. So if y'all wanted to get the deals, y'all y'all go to elsewhere or somewhere else. Am I right? That's true. And again, that's just for locals everywhere. Like I, I talked to my guy. He he recently moved to Las Vegas and he been out 
he been living out in Las Vegas for like yeah you know, about five six seven years now maybe even longer and he was mm-hmm. telling me like how all the big time poker players they go to they go to the Bellagio they go to the Wynn they go to the uh, the ones on the strips he said bro you don't want to mess with the strip if you want to play some good poker there's some poker places off the strip that you can go to and he said that's just all for for tourists it's it's, it's super expensive and and it just get crazy and for the locals he said if he, he's like look being i'm a local and you want to come here i got you because the people that comes here they ain't nothing but tourists and they don't even know they they just go right to the tourist attraction so so yeah man so but your your new year's eve uh brought it in being that you're in philly now you you brought it in at the house how was your uh how, how did you bring in 2024 i was chilling i spent some time with my parents <clears throat> my throat's getting dry i spent some time with my parents and then i hung out with my boo and i was like let's try some dominoes the place i really wanted to eat was closed so i said dominoes it is and we watched a movie and called it a night you know, I like to go out to galas and fancy parties, but when it's, like, a dangerous night like New Year's, I don't want to be out driving. I don't want to be out. I'm kind of like a homebody, so I was cool with being in the house with my cat and my boo chilling. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, last question before you get on up out of here because you did mention it earlier in the uh, conversation. Uh, you say you don't want to do OnlyFans, but there there are a few female truckers out here that does uh, OnlyFans content. I mean, what what is your actual thought about it? Like, I mean, you being a female trucker and everything, you 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 still wouldn't want to do that that type of OnlyFans content? No, I want a husband and some children and a pass on the legacy, like it just depends on what you want. That's why I said some women choose money. You know, the glitz and the glamour. That's, you know, if that's what they want to do, I say get your money. But, you know, don't be crying 10 years from now when you can't get a man or, you know, your life is what it is. So, I mean, everybody has choices in life. And if if you got the balls enough to live with it, then I say do it. But I, I'm just not ballsy enough. It's not my character. It's not my personality to put my body or my image out there like that but you know you know I don't I don't think it's worth it but every woman has to make that decision for herself and you know I'm not saying I support it but I'm not gonna look down on a woman for doing it I'm just gonna say I'm not doing it that's what's up all right Jasmine thank you very much again for sitting down with me and having a having a conversation, sharing your experience with me and uh, sharing your stories with me and everything. Congratulations on your CDL and uh, much success to you in the future. Thank you, Rocco. You have an amazing night. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes, look Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.